Welcome back lighting friends, it's Rob from Pathway Connectivity talking about the Cognito Lighting Control Console and specifically in this video about color. In the last video we spoke about general color control using the IRGB tools, the wheels tools, the libraries, and the color picker. This video is about color spaces and how you might use different spaces to choose a color and what it means to fade in a color space. First off, a little introduction into color spaces. There seems to be as many color spaces as there are colors. While that might be an exaggeration of the truth, there are many to choose from. A defined color space is just an organization of colors. Differing applications find convenient ways to show color and the relationship between colors for each situation. This is the well-known CIEXY chromaticity diagram, which theoretically shows the entire visual spectrum. We call it a gamut, meaning it's a certain complete subset of colors that can be accurately represented in a given circumstance. There is no printer, monitor, projector, or lighting instrument that can achieve this feat. That is why we define smaller gamuts within this larger space. Although scientifically useful, the XY or XYY CIE gamut isn't that useful for lighting designers, mainly because we tend to think of light in its primary components of red, green, and blue, or sometimes other triplicates, and moving about in the 2D XY space doesn't look natural to the eye. On the other hand, this gamut may be useful when working on stage because we put an awful lot of emphasis on hue and differing hues are easy to identify here. Thinking about it from a DMX perspective, we can well imagine that a control handle can move about to select a different hue. But this picture only tells part of the story. Notice all the radial positions have the same saturation. If you reduce the color component, you're reducing the saturation. Now this 2D picture shows both saturated and unsaturated colors and how you can move between white and a color. Now the topic of white is discussed fully in the next video describing something called correlated color temperature or CCT. Although the video starts by explaining some pretty wacky science, it demonstrates how Cognito deals with this complex subject in a clear and simple way. I said that we, as designers, are used to describing color in triplicates. That's either red, green, blue, cyan, magenta, or yellow, or hue, saturation, and what, you may ask? Well, some use lightness, some use brightness, but Cognito uses value. That means the triplicate is HSV. This animation shows value going from zero to full. We now have RGB, CMY, and HSV. Is that it? Well, almost. Let's see some examples of these three first. Barring laser lights and video monitors, in entertainment lighting, we primarily deal with two types of fixtures, additive lights and subtractive lights. Before LED lighting, theatrical lights used tungsten or an arc source to produce white light and we placed gel in front of it to subtract out the colors we didn't want, leaving us with the colors we did. With automated lighting, this was primarily done using three graduated dichroic glass wheels that were mechanically introduced into the beam. You started with white light, then using cyan filters to remove the red component, a yellow filter to remove the blue, and a magenta to remove the green. If you used all three filters, you pretty much ended up with black. Looking at it in our familiar color space, it might look like this. Saturated colors on the periphery and pretty much mud in the middle. Additive lights like RGB LEDs start out dark and systematically add the primary colors of red, green, and blue, which when mixed will give you cyan, magenta, and yellow, or any color in between, and white when all of them are on. This is how it would look in our familiar color space. So what does it mean to fade within a color space and how do you choose? Incognito, 
after you select the lights, go to Control, Color, and choose the Wheels tool. Notice the yellow wheel is labeled Color Space. Clicking on the A button, you can choose a space from the list. Let's choose CMY. Now notice that the remaining three wheels are loaded with cyan, magenta, and yellow. If you write a queue using CMY, the DMX slots, and therefore each filter, move linearly and you see a linear fade from, say, blue to green. With traditional moving lights, that means the magenta moves out as the yellow moves in to meet the cyan filter, which stays put. This is another way to show this fade where the muddy bit in the middle is when all of the glass is interfering with the flow of light. If you choose, you can use CMY space to control RGB additive LEDs as well. This is what it would look like if you wrote a cue to fade from blue to green. The bloom in the middle is when both LEDs are on at the same time, which gets you closer to white. Again, it doesn't matter what type of color mixing lights you have. You can choose colors and write cues that fade in any space. Here, I'll select a very light, a CMY subtractive light, and an ETC color source PAR, an RGB additive light. From a DMX point of view, hue might be mapped to percentage values like this. Moving from zero to full takes me through the whole range of colors. Incognito, use the yellow wheel to change to HSV, which puts hue on the red wheel. Cognito's natural language control never uses a percentage when a proper unit of measurement is available. So that is why it shows the hue in degrees, going from zero to 360 degrees. Zero degrees defines red and sits at three o'clock. Green appears at 120 degrees or about 1030, and cyan lands at nine o'clock or 180 degrees out from red. The blues appear at 240 degrees before we get back to the pinky reds. The saturation attribute is on the green wheel, and in this case, percentage is the proper unit. This is what it would look like on a slider console. The final wheel determines value. If your value is zero, you have no light. Again, on a slider desk, it looks like this. HSV is not only a convenient way to choose a color, as it moves all of the color flags for you with just one wheel, but when you write a cue using it, Cognito actually performs the fade in that color space. That's rather complicated, but the DMX end of things is taken care of for you. A cue sequence that goes from a saturated green to a saturated blue would look like this because the saturation value, or the distance from the middle, does not change. Only the hue does. That means you can avoid the mud or the bloom that traditionally appears in the middle of the gamut. But this gamut is a circle. Who's to say that the correct way from green to blue is to travel counterclockwise through cyan? We must consider that in some instances you may want to avoid cyan. That is why Cognito offers another option. The color space we just used is called HSV Subtle. Cognito determined that the quickest way to get from blue to green is to travel through cyan. It's the path that takes you through the least number of colors. It's subtle. On the other hand, it's also possible to go through a whole whack of colors to get to blue. In this case, you would travel clockwise through zero degrees, resulting in many, many color changes. That is why this mode is called HSV Rainbow. Choosing which color space depends on the circumstances and the two colors you're fading between. Normally, HSV Subtle makes the most sense. It avoids the mud, the bloom, and the rainbow. Cognito is clever, as it's quite a trick to be able to fade through the top or the bottom of a DMX slot. Imagine on a traditional lighting console if you wanted to go from pink to amber. It would be some sort of strange physics that helped you avoid green. On a side note, if you're not using Cognito and your lighting fixtures themselves offer a native HSL DMX mode, I would avoid it like the plague. 
It's very tricky to get the color transitions you want if the console can't fade from 90% to 10% without passing through 50%. Cognito, on the other hand, does take care of this issue and can fade HSL fixtures subtly between any two colors. Now here is a fun little experiment I shot to show you how this works in real life. Here are six different fades from green to blue shot six times and then synchronized. I first shot an LED doing an RGB fade, then a very light doing the same thing. Then I did it again using HSV Subtle. And finally, two more takes using HSV Rainbow. The progress bar at the top will show you where you are in the fade because I'm sure you'll want to stop and scrub this back and forth to look at how radically different the transitions are between two colors, in this case, just green and blue. I'll sit back and let you watch this. I think that was pretty cool. So join me next time we're going to talk about correlated color temperature, what it means to define white and all the different versions of white. And the follow on video will show you the Neato iPad apps and how you get a lot more color tools with that. So until next time, thanks for joining me. I'm Rob from Pathway Connectivity.